it's Abby from Make Life Your Runway, and I'm here with a kind of cool video, if I do say so myself. I have been project panning for a couple years. I'll even link down my first project pan down below if you have not been following me for that long. Basically, I started that like thinking, we'll just see what happened, and here we are several years later, and project panning is a part of just my daily routine. Uh, when you pan products, you get into like a committed relationship with them, so you kind of get to know what kind of products you enjoy, which ones you feel like punished by or for, or like it just feels like too much to keep using them. So I want to share with you types of products that I love now thanks to Project Pan, and then there are a couple that I don't, like I'm just like stop buying it. So if that sounds like something you'd like to watch, Watch, then just keep watching here we go all right so I thought of this because I am wearing a lot of project pan items right now I will link down below my current project pan one thing that I have learned from panning is not to have too many projects going on at once last year I had a ton of projects going on at one time and it really overwhelmed me so this year I kicked off by establishing which products I'd like to pan this year but we're just doing one slow project pan at a time and I'm seeing so much progress and it's keeping me motivated and inspired so it got me thinking about like Okay, I know there's products now that I don't really enjoy, and there's products that are now holy grails. So the one that kind of started this all was a, uh, a facial spray. It's not really a setting spray. I don't have the original one anymore, but I've panned it probably six months ago. But it it's a spray from, um, where was it from? TJ Maxx, and it was a coconut spray and the brand was pearlescent and they have different scents and I haven't been back to a TJ Maxx in a while so I don't know if they still have it or not but I loved that spray so much like it was a pretty big bottle um, <laughs> and I just like my skin just really absorbed it and it was really nice so when I ran out of that I realized I miss having a setting spray that I apply after my nightly moisturizer so now I have these let's see if I can hold them all at one time these are the Mario Bad Badescu and I have them in the sense this one is their new lavender newly released I have their cucumber one and then I have their most popular or known is the rose. I would say these all perform exactly the same. You can find these at Target. They are cruelty free, paraben free. They're about $7.50. The rose water is um, the most repurchased. And I, yeah, they all perform the same. It's just really a matter of what scent you prefer. I love them all. So I just rotate through them. I just grab one. And after I do my skincare, I absolutely love these. And these particular brands, I'll keep repurchasing because they are so affordable and easy to get a hold of. So that was the first thing that really kick-started this. Another thing was I panned a little sample of the Tarte Maracuja oil. And I also panned a Josie Moran Argan Oil. I loved both of those so much, and I didn't have one anymore. So I went ahead and repurchased, or not repurchased, but purchased this one. This one is Andalou Naturals A Thousand Roses uh, Moroccan Beauty Oil. If you've been following me for a while, you know Andalou Naturals is one of my favorite skincare lines. And I use their... Um, a Thousand Roses Sensitive uh, Facial Lotion that has SPF, I think 15 in it. So I wanted to try something else from the line. And I wouldn't say these are dupes for the Tarte or the Josie Moran, but it is a really nice thick oil that's nice to apply at night. So I really like this. And I, basically with the setting sprays and that oil, I don't necessarily want to keep repurchasing the same brands, but I always want to have those on hand in my beauty rotation and then I have one more skincare and then we'll move on to makeup but this is kind of like a two for one but one thing or two things that I use all the time now because of um, Project Pan. I'm gonna have to stand up to show these to you because I can't hold them all at once. Okay so I'm this category is samples 
but in particular, skincare samples. So you know we all get them in Ulta and Sephora orders, and they always have like the samplers and stuff. And because of that, I use these up, and I really like it. In particular, the mask and the oils. I'll show you what's exactly in my hand. So in my hand was three Peter Thomas Roth um, masks. I got these in a sampler the year before last, so I'm really trying to work through them so they don't expire. Um, but I have the Irish Moore Mud. I have the 24K Mask and I have the uh, Cucumber Gel Mask. These are almost done. They're all uh, probably each halfway done, but I really, really enjoy throwing a mask on. I have another mask that I'm not sure how I feel about, but it's Dermalogica um, Multivitamin Power Recovery Mask. It just has a weird, like, paint scent to it, so I'm not sure how I feel about it, but it hasn't caused me to break out or anything, so so far so good. And then if you saw around Christmas time, I bought some stuff from Ulta and they had all these skincare samples, which is where that Dermalogica came from. And then also, um, this one was from a Sephora birthday gift, I think, the Caudalie. Ca it's a serum and a lotion. I have, this is a, a, a radiant serum, and then this is just a moisturizing sorbet. I never use serums until um, panning samples, and I really enjoy it. I mean, serums are so expensive, so I can't say that I would go purchase a serum uh, right away, but it is definitely something that I am paying attention to since panning those and focusing on panning them. Okay, moving on to makeup, and again, a lot of this is types of makeup because I've already panned the actual products, but the first thing is foundation. I was never into foundation, well, until YouTube, <laughs> but until, like, project panning, and I would just pan one, and which requires me to wear it almost every day so I can get through it in a two, three, four month period. And from that, I'm like, wow, I really I really like what's happening. And so then I would buy another one and buy another one. And last year, I went through five or six foundations. This year, I've gone through one, and I have two that are about halfway through. And I find when I do a full face like I have today, the products just sit more nicely and cohesively on foundation. So the one that I... This is a spoiler. This is going to be in an upcoming project pan. This is number seven, Lift and Illuminate. This particular one is not very old in my collection, but I'm to the point with foundations in my collection that none of them are that old. So I just need to focus on using the ones while I'm in that color range. So right now this is cool vanilla. I like that it has an air pump. You can see exactly how much is left in it. And so this one, I need to use it before winter's up because I have some that are my summer colors and it will be a while until I'm like this shade again. Um, so definitely foundations, pretty much any project pan moving forward, any everyday use, I will have foundation a part of the mix. And then another thing, oh my gosh, I did not really like this type of product until project painting. This is the Cover FX Setting and Translucent Light, and this one is called Perfect Setting Powder. I thought setting powders were fine, but I never was like, ooh, let me get some loose setting powder until I panned the number seven loose setting powder, and I fell in love. I absolutely, like, loved it. And that one in particular is good, but it was more of just the the ease of it. It looks more like natural, less cakey. It's easier to just fluff it on my face, if that's the right term, and d dust it on my face. Like, what is the proper term for this? <laughs> but, and just sweep it away. Sweep it, sweep it away. Yeah. <laughs> Opposed to a pressed powder that can get cakey sometimes, um, and it takes all the tackiness away that's, because some foundations are super tacky. Like, I just finished the L'Oreal Lumi, super tacky foundation. Like, I needed a lot of this to have it feel, like, natural, um, but right now I'm wearing the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea, not a tacky foundation, so I don't need as much of this, but I, like, 
I go through these so fast. And this one I probably would have been done with, but I kind of was like in this sad period of mourning, if you will, after finishing the number seven. I was like, nothing will live up to it. And so I kept using this and I couldn't really find like my grind with it, but now we're there. We're in our sweet spot and I'm loving it. So I really feel like this, like, cause it's right here. Give me a month, it'll be gone. And then, I don't know, I'll try something else. I'm curious about the Maybe Maybelline Fit. Curious about some higher end ones. I don't know, but it's gonna be in my collection, that's for sure. Okay, okay. All right, where do we wanna go next? Oh yeah, strobing liquids, liquid luminizers. It all started with the NYX, their liquid luminator, I, I, that was like two summers ago I used it up and I was like wow I really like that and I have the Peter Thomas Roth 24k it's not panned but majority of it's gone again I really like that and then I had the Becca one in opal really liked it so I picked up this is Maybelline's liquid strobe this one is in 100 light iridescent I haven't got a lot of use out of this particular one because I've been using so many illuminating foundations, but I know that I have some matte, more matte foundations coming up, so I'll definitely be mixing it in. My favorite way to use these is to mix it into my foundation. Um, that's the best way. I've tried putting them all over my face as a primer, but A, it just feels like too much on my skin, and B, it kind of gives me like Tin Man vibes. I just... Not my thing, <laughs> but I think when I mix it in a foundation, it's like that perfect radiance, everything that you want and love and live for. It's good stuff. All right, this is a recent thing, um, but eyebrows. This right here is the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer, and mine is in Burnett, and that is what's in my brows today. I've owned this for probably a year or two, and I never use it. I'd use it here and there, go months without using it, use it again, but I'm like, you know what? The formula in this particular one right here is older. I need to use it, and I don't want to waste it, so I've been using it every single day for about two months, and this is good. Like, this is real good. I'm impressed, and I like, I'm just looking at it like, why did I not use it? And I have um, another older brow product. This is the Cabral by Benefit, and it is just a sample size. This one is a number three. I need to play with it more to see if it's something I can use daily. I will just go ahead and declutter it if it's not the right color. And then I have one from It Cosmetics in their universal color that came in a boxy charm. So I'm gonna play with those, um, but at some point, I'll probably go back to the pencil form and I foresee it now being something that is in my routine. And this isn't going along with like the panning stuff, but I do run a brow gel, like the Essence Make Me Brow over it. And yeah, I, yeah, why? Why did it take so long? I don't know. Okay, we have two more products and then we have a couple of products that are just like it's not my thing. The first one is lip gloss. I've panned so many lip glosses and I just love them. <laughs> I love them more than any other type of lip item. They're just, they're my thing. They are my thing. Lip gloss and lip balm are my things. And so I like, I don't know, the NYX one, these are easy to pan if you use them consistently. The Buxom ones are super easy to pan if you use them consistently. Have there been other ones? I've also have panned um, like these L'Oreal Infallibles, also super easy to pan if you use them consistently. Have not been successful with the, uh, the Maybelline ones, but um, yeah, I just lip gloss, lip gloss, lip gloss, lip gloss, and then for lip balm, you know I always use Jack Black, but lip gloss, enough said. All right, actually two hair products. So prior, this is more so my rolling project pan that I was doing last year, and I do plan on bringing that back. I had like a little like, let's take a break, because I have nothing else to put in a rolling project pan, and now I have all the stuff, so I'm ready to bring it back, but 
from that was hair care. Like, I didn't do anything in my hair. I would wash it, let it air dry, throw some curls and hairspray in it. That's it. But I was, I'm still working through it. This is the Rustic Spray. Um, it's about $15. I had this in a rolling project paint. It gives a lot of volume, and I'm not using it today, actually. But I really, really, really enjoyed it. And also, if you like my hair, I did post a, like, daily hair routine. Um, as I said in the video, it comes out a little bit different every time, but I always do the same things. <laughs> but, um, and I also talked about my, it's all affordable products from Ulta. So I talked about the hair straightener that I got, which is a cheaper alternative to, like, some of the more expensive ones. But I got this product in a Influencer, and, um, it is a protein recharge. It's a leave-in conditioner, but it also is a heat protectant. I I panned the It's a 10 leave-in conditioner in a rolling project pan. I love leave-in conditioners. <laughs> and I just loved like how smooth and soft my hair felt. So when I got this one in Influencer, I was super excited. Um and I like that it's a heat protectant. I used a different heat protectant in that video. It was, um, I can just show you. It was the Garnier Fritis. And um, they're totally different products, so they're not even comparable. But this, is this fabulous? No. I mean, like, it's it's L'Oreal. It's affordable. It smells good. Doesn't gunk up, gunk up my hair. It's nice. Um... Not saying run out and buy this particular one, but leave-in conditioners in general are so nice. And when I'm done with these two products, I really want to invest in the It's a 10 to have that again. That was really nice, and this isn't on par with that one, but this is really nice too, if that makes sense. So, yeah, those are the products that because of multiple different project pans, I love them. But I have just two types of products that I... Just like, girl, stop. We're done. <laughs> the first is the lipsticks. Like, is this crazy? Lipsticks. I don't wear lipsticks. Like, I said it. I need to stop buying them. I do not wear lipsticks. About a year ago, I posted a video that says types of products I need to stop buying. And I will post that again. It was really popular. Amber F did the tag, and then a lot of you came over and followed me from her, so I really appreciate Amber, and I appreciate you guys following me over, and an update is probably in order, but lipsticks, I do not wear them. I have a lipstick to clutter coming up on my channel because I'm to the point, they just, they're like getting under my skin. I'm like, I'm not gonna wear you. You're wasting space. Like, I feel like I see bacteria growing in them. Like, we're done. We're breaking up. We're done. And I'm not going to say lipsticks always and forever because there are two shades that are older that I will repurchase. But overall, I need to stop buying lipsticks. I love lip gloss. I love lip balm. That's that. I like some liquid lips. Like, that's, that's, that's who I am. So, I just grabbed a couple, just like, do you need to see a lipstick? And these formulas are good. So it's nothing against Milani or Maybelline. They have some of the best drugstore um, formulas. And they're super affordable. Like, I have so many, um, like, Maybelline ones. And I have a couple of Milani. I'll probably go hold on to the Milani for a little bit longer. And, yeah, I just... I don't wear them. I If I had a choice, I would just put on my lip balm and be done. And going along with that is lip liners. I, <laughs> I have one in a project pan, and you'll see my progress on that soon. Um, and I only own three lip liners, and spoiler, I'm down to two. We had a little pause. We're back. <laughs> Alright, so what I was saying about lip liners was... I've been doing where I put it on and then put my lip balm on in the morning and yeah, it's just how I've been able to work through them because I don't know. <laughs> it's a struggle for me. But I tried it with this color. This is Plum Plush Plum by Jordana and oh my gosh, this 
this did not work. You need a natural color if you're going to be lining your lips and putting a lip balm on because this color right here was way too much. It was like sliding everywhere. Like I was so scared. I was hiding my lips because I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like all over the place. So yeah, this one I'm not even going to torture myself through. <laughs> We're done. But anyways, that is that. That's it. That's all of it. So there's only two types of products that from panning, I'm like, Aah. and there's probably been more over time, but those are the ones that are like really popping out to me right now. But the ones that like really got me going are, are the setting sprays, the um, L'Oreal, well not necessarily L'Oreal, but the leave-in conditioner and um, foundations Ooh, and oil. These have become... I'm like holding them all awkward. Those have become Holy Grail type products, not necessarily like these brand or particular brands, but I just, I just love them now. <laughs> but anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this enjoyable. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!